so many different flowers in the fields of life, so many different ways for all of us to be. Today, in this episode, I am taking you into a business boardroom for a presentation about using intuition in your career and business setting. That's right. This is the Strong Body, Strong Soul Show. I am Maria, and I'm so excited to share Gail Cerna, psychic medium and intuition development expert. She did a presentation recently, and I am going to present it for you. Please feel free to call in with questions or comments. Please do not look at the screen if you are listening while driving. I just inserted these photos to make it a little more fun for you. But really, the entire presentation is an audio presentation, so I hope you enjoy. Hello, everybody. Hi, I'm Maria. But more importantly, I have brought Gail Cerna to the meeting here today because getting in touch with our own intuition, our own motivations about why we are doing things in our businesses, in our careers, is so vital to making good choices in our lives. We can get so inundated with so much information out there in the world that we can get overwhelmed. So I've invited Gail Cerna here because she does teach group intuition development classes to people and helps them figure out how to take a moment and make good positive decisions for themselves, for their careers, for their family lives, for how they teach their children how to be, all sorts of stuff. But today we're gonna focus on business. Elevating your business. Yes, Gail Serna, welcome. Thank you for having me. Um, So when you think of intuition, uh, how many of you can sense when you have a gut, gut instinct? And how many of you have actually followed it for business decisions within your career? Yes, Have you? can you talk about an example for that? Just in job decisions, kind of in general, you know, it's like you've got an opportunity to maybe make a career change and maybe you've got more than one option and after doing some research, the intuition is this is what you need to do and, and it's been lovely. And so when you tap into that aspect of your intuition, um, do you have a sense of where you're getting that guidance from? I do. And where is that for you? I have a firm faith foundation. Okay. And so my, I put my trust in God. And That is wonderful because that is one of the steps that's clearly a marker for developing your intuition. So you're clearly on the journey on the road. Um, I also use my intuition in everything I do. It guides me through just everyday life. And just to tell you a little bit about what my journey was, as a young girl, I grew up in a household where we were Jewish, but we did not have a belief in God. And that to me as a young girl just didn't seem right going up through my life. I always felt like something was missing and it happened to cause a lot of anxiety for me without really even being able to put like a understanding or awareness on it when I was growing up. So fast forward to my 20s, my dad unfortunately passed away and he committed suicide. And um, I was really suffering at that point and I was trying to make sense of it all. And I had a friend who was down her spiritual journey like a lot longer than I had been at that point and she knew I was suffering. And as a result, she encouraged me, go see this psychic medium. And I thought, what? A psychic medium? Why would I ever see a psychic medium? What? What is a psychic medium? <laughs> so I just at that point really didn't have a reference point. But I did, after her encouraging me and wanting me to just feel better in my own head about it, I made the appointment. And what happened was an experience that changed my life forever. Not only did I have this emotional sense of release, but I felt stale energy leave my back. I felt it. And I knew there was something to the energy around us, whether we're asleep at the wheel or whether we're tuned into it, we're an energy driven universe. (laughs) So you better learn how to have the energy work with you instead of controlling you. And you've probably all heard of that word empathic. There are those of us that are very sensitive beings. 
and they go through life not knowing how to control their energy. And what it does is it leads people down the path of wanting to commit suicide because things are just coming at them all the time that are energy driven. And there's really simple protocols to being able to deal with energy. And in that session, she was what was called an evidential medium as well. She brought through sound evidence that my dad um, was there communicating through her. And there would be no way that she would actually know that this was the case. Um, and then from there, once I trusted that he was there, she had reached him on the other side. She brought through this message that he could never tell me he loved me in life. And so it was so healing um, that, that that was the point where I said, okay, um, I'm hooked. And I was always, during my day job, if you will, I'm an ex I was an executive recruiter for years. Um, I liked being an executive recruiter, but it didn't really fulfill my soul because I feel like being a psychic medium is my soul's journey, my soul's purpose. Um, so in my spare time, along with raising young kids and a family, <laughs> I devoted my life to the intuitive arts. <laughs> I did everything I could to take classes, um, get a mentor, sit in psychic circles, whatever I could to feel comfortable within my skin to develop the intuitive aspects within my brain. And just so you know, intuition is everyone's right. It's um, not something that um, is just for the select few. Everyone is born with their intuitive gifts. It's up to you. And what I see happening is based on people's conditioning. So what, what I can say around all this is, um, there, there's basically five five steps to trusting within your your intuitive guidance, and the first one is developing your relationship with your higher self. Really figuring out what that is, sitting in in meditation. The second one would be prayer, and in my opinion, there's a difference between prayer and meditation. M meditation is good, but if you're not used to doing meditation. Prayer takes no time at all. And I like to say prayer is telepathically having a conversation with your higher self. So if you kind of talk to yourself in your head, guess what? Your higher self is the one listening. <laughs> so so that's that's kind of the key. So basically the the different the different steps um, to really developing your own intuition is the awareness of who your divine is. And the way to have the awareness and the relationship is through prayer. Um, going out in nature is a huge one. Um, the breath is another one. Changing your focus is the fifth one. And um, always setting your attention around love in your head, in your brain. Because like Maria was saying, you, you could be a banker, you could be a mortgage person, you could be a real estate agent, you could be a life coach, you could be any number of professions, you could be an IT person. As long as you have the awareness and love with love in your heart, and it's your disposition that you allow yourself to have as you go out with your day, you will make an impact on all the people you serve. That's the whole point with, you know, people say, oh, there's so much darkness on the planet right now, but guess what? There's a lot of light. And light is where you interact every single day with people. And it's a choice. It's a choice. So those, those are the steps to developing your intuition. And we have what's called brain centers. Um, there's the gut. Um, there's the heart, which is the center of the chest. Um, there's the third eye, and then there's, of course, the brain. So imagine if you're um, a real estate agent and you're trying to make a decision about, A, um, if you want to take on that client because you need to sell their house. So how does that make you feel in your gut? Does that make you feel um, like good? Or do you know automatically, can you sense that there's gonna, this is gonna be a really troublesome client and you've got like knots in your stomach? So you take them anyway because you need the money, <laughs> knowing full well that it's not really gonna be the most pleasurable experience because guess what? 
your gut never lies. If you pay attention to those subtle nuances of how you're feeling, that is your intuition. Um, th think of it this way. Think of your brain as being in hemispheres, the right side of your brain and the left side of your brain. You would need to be a mathematician to calculate how incestuous the thoughts are that are like weeds, like the mustard seed growing in the hillsides. So this is where developing your intuition is critical to living a more joyful life, if I can tie it in, um, because you really start to become aware of what your intuition is telling you based on each decision and thought process you have. So if you could like check in to how you're thinking and feeling and sensing and knowing around things, you, you would start to see well, maybe, maybe on second thought, I don't want to buy that house there. Why? Even if I have a high pressured person telling me to buy it, you know, look at the neighborhood. Maybe it's not quite, maybe I need to look some more. And then five years down the line, you're locked into that house only to see, oh darn, I'm so like unhappy here. Okay. So that, that's the other thing tapping into your intuition does is it gives you um, not only coping tools, but it allows you to speak your own inner truth. How many of you are like people pleasers, kind of like me? So the, le the left side of your brain, brain is the analytical mind. And one of the reasons why kids are so troubled right now um, within our society is because all school addresses is the, um, the left hemisphere. Um, it's very academic. It's very anxiety ridden. There's no real like schools even for public schools. I'm not talking about private schools, but public schools have cut budgets on arts, any creative outlet that children might have. And so if you don't fit into the soapbox and you're already a really empathetic student, you probably aren't feeling like very secure about your own self esteem and self image and self worth. And that's kind of what it what it boils down to to really developing the creative aspect of your right brain and think about like famous artists like taylor swift she even talks about her songs are god given she's not in charge of crafting her songs kanye west talks about the same thing it's within them it's within them when they're creating music it comes from another place so the key is when you're tapping into your intuition, it, the number one thing is always change your focus through your breath. It's that meditative breath that we talk about. And I'm going to take you through a meditation to kind of show you what I mean. So um, if your mind is going a million miles an hour, see, you're, you're the gardener of your own mind. So you know all those weeds. Um, the mustard seed. <laughs> so imagine mustard seed in your mind as how incestuous your weeds in your mind are. Think of the weeds as thoughts. So it's it's super important to be aware of what's going on in your mind as things are sprouting, taking root and changing course. And what I mean by that, if it's negative, it's not helping you. It's not helping you with your mindset. It's not helping with your perception of yourself. It's not helping you in your family life because you're in a bad mood already and you're going to infect other people. So monitoring what's going on up here is the key. And um, there's things that you can do. There's spiritual counseling techniques that I know to help people really reframe a lot of their um, mental awareness of what they're telling themselves and their stories that are rooted and she knows this stories that are rooted deep within your psyche all from childhood before seven having to do with your parents <laughs> it's just the way it is and you don't even know it you don't even know it's a story you're telling yourself over and over again so as you become aware then there are steps that you can take to really get rid of those weeds and pluck them out, pluck them out. And a lot of it is, and every spiritual teacher will tell you this because why? It's your God-given right. Affirmation statements. 
<laughs> people talk about it till people are really blue in the face. It's really funny. Like you don't even want to hear it anymore. You might hear someone else talking about it and you just don't even read what they're saying because, oh, I know it, I know it. But how many people practice, practice checking in with what you're thinking and feeling and changing focus through the breath, through going out in nature, whatever that is for you, and then giving yourself a positive affirmation statement to combat that thought. So for me, I'm practicing, there's not even any time that can, like your thoughts are there, it allows you to really stand within your power, your inner integrity. Um, what you start to realize is anyone has the right to have miracles. Based on people's conditioning through their life, their intuition turns off. So you're born, you come through your birth canal, which is the mother's birth canal is the way in the earth. And unfortunately through death, it's another transition. That's how we leave the earth. Our intuition turns off. And that will cause a lot of anxiety for people who don't know how to clearly work with the energy. I mean, I don't know if this has been your experience and maybe if you feel comfortable enough to bring it up in the group, share. How many of you have seen energy or seen ghosts, people call it, earthbound spirits? Nothing to be afraid of. There's just certain protocols that one needs to learn in order to feel comfortable and safe to work with the energy. And the very first one is, guess what? She nailed it. She gets an A plus for this course. It's trusting in the divine. So your God source, your creator has any label you want to put on it, but it's up to you to figure that out. No preacher, no pastor, no rabbi, no priest is going to be able to fulfill that for you. Plus, whatever you've learned when you were in religious school, you throw that out <laughs> because a lot of it is anxiety ridden because especially like, for instance, my experience has been with some of the churches, let's just say the Catholic church is one because um, my kids were raised Catholic. Um, they did use a lot of control things within kids and um, your, your God source is not judgmental. That I can tell you, your God source is not critical. Your God source loves you unconditionally. So if you have an awareness of that, that everything else on the planet, the fear, the anger, um, whatever you're experiencing that's not love is the illusion. And the more you grow in strength with who your higher self is, that fear uh, does subside and you have a coping mechanism. I find that it's the first impression that is most reliable on um, your intuition. Once you trust it, that's where your intuition comes in is it's the trust, it's the innate trust as you develop and you practice. With practice. Yes. Instead of having the knee jerk reaction yes. and making decisions based on yes. deep defending yourself or other. It's the first impression that is most reliable on um, your intuition? Once you trust it, yes. Once you get it's two handouts, one which describes your psychic and your physical senses, because you were always meant to combine the two. They're not supposed to be separate. And then I have a test to sh for you to see what is my dominant psychic property. Just so everyone knows, I'm a Catholic preschool teacher as well. Just so you know. Which is okay. <laughs> so great. Right. I think In case we that. Want to go back to well, I, I I just want to comment that it's not always necessary to throw everything out. You know, it comes with a certain amount of spiritual maturity that you have. I remember when my son was in first grade, the teacher, first thing she said to them all was, love God more than your mom. And he came home crying. <laughs> so, you know, you take it, religion is there for a reason, and it is good too. I think it all works together. It's all individual. That's all I wanted to say. Here. <laughs> no, I, Maria, I'm glad. Just in case that was in anybody's back of their head, <laughs> throwing out everything, you know, don't worry about that. It's all very individual. Yeah. Okay. I, I, it all I works understand. together. Two handouts, one which describes your psychic and your physical senses, because you were always meant to combine the two. They're not supposed to be separate. And then I have a test to sh for you to see what is my dominant psychic property. 
So intuition is nothing to be afraid of. Um, there's protocols that one can use to develop their intuition. They raised their hand and they said they've seen ghosts. And did you, did you, you were the one that raised your hand, right? You have the ability to see spirit. I, I haven't visually seen, but I have felt. You felt. And did that make you feel uncomfortable or how did that make you feel? No. I, I started at a very young age feeling things like that. Um, but there, were, there was one time that I was so annoyed with what I was feeling that I, like, I didn't want it anymore. And I had gone to somebody like you. Yeah. To get rid of this, get rid of this. Yeah. I said, no, no, that you don't want to get rid of that because that protects you, which is kind of what happened in a situation. Is once you learn the proper protocols to working with energy, there's no reason to fear it. And that way you'll be able to better embrace it. What I can tell you is, humans kind of freak me out not energy energy does not freak me out because there are clear protocols in place but i can't really control another human's behavior i don't have any control energy's nothing <laughs> so that's why i'm trying to point out that's what developing these psychic and physical senses will do for you so we have clairvoyant clairaudient clairsentient clairaliance gustiance and claircognizant are um, what like if you were taking a psychic development class you would be learning about the clairs um, but basically for every physical property you have you have a psychic property so clairvoyance is clear seeing clear audience is clear hearing sentient is feeling aliens is smelling gustisense is tasting and cognizance is knowing and probably for most of us, the biggest properties people have off the bat but just aren't aware of it is their knowing. And that's like a thought that pops into your head out of nowhere. That takes total trust to run with it when it happens. It's all trust and practice. And then the feeling, the feeling. Um, so if you go to the next page, this is the test where you can kind of determine what your own primary skill is. So if you, if you think back to when you were on a vacation, what stands out? And this is easy. So if you can think about, think of your physical senses, because whatever your dominant physical sense is, that's your psychic property. That will match. That will match. So are you the type of person where um, you were really being heightened by the beautiful sights of nature, the architecture, or something that you witnessed? So that's um, seeing the peaceful, romantic, restful, or exhilarating feelings associated with the trip is feeling the importance and interesting cultural or historical information that you learned while traveling is basically um, the knowing or the sweet um, silence, the crashing surf, the chirping birds, that's your hearing. So for me personally, the way it trans translates for me my number one psychic property is my knowing and then from there i hear it and then i feel it and like um the feeling i sort of ask spirit you know i don't really want to feel so deeply like if someone comes to me for a mediumship reading which what a mediumship reading is you're connecting to the deceased loved one um i don't want to feel grandpa harry's heart attack <laughs> So I've asked my divine to tone that down. But what I really want to have is real like evidence, evidence coming through about that. So the person having the reading can say, you definitely have Grandpa Harry. You've got Grandpa Harry. So that would be more like my knowing kind of popping in. So you could take this test. You could take this test um, on your own to really determine what your psychic properties are. If we have time, can I close the group with the mini meditation? Yes. Okay. So why doesn't everyone just put your papers down, drop your pencils, your pens, just sit comfortably in your chair. Breathe in through your nose, out through your mouth. A lot of people hold their breath. Just allow yourself to feel the movements of your breath. Breathe any way that's comfortable for you. You could do a yoga breath if you want, which is 
in through the nose and out through the mouth for an elongated period of time. Just sit for a minute with your breath. If those thoughts stream in, they'll be there when you're done. So just take yourself back to your breath. Allow the goodness of your higher self to come into this room and tell your higher self, if you feel comfortable, if you don't, that's okay. You'd like to have a relationship. This is the start. So it's like a little prayer of intention that you're saying to your divine. Just take a moment to breathe. Visualize all the transactions in your life, whether they're for your clients, for getting new business, for your family life. Visualize a beautiful pink sea of love coming from your heart, surrounding all the areas of your life and all of those clients that you know you're going to be serving, see them flocking to your business in 2020, filling up your calendar. Visualize yourself with your own peak performance as you serve them and serve the world. It's very important to ground yourself because you're on earth and I know many people who are sensitive don't take the time to ground. So see what looks like tree roots going deep into the earth from the balls of your feet and through the layers of the earth. See beautiful healing energy coming up from mother earth, up through the roots up through your energy field or what's called an auric field. Any stories that you tell yourself or thought forms, maybe karmic contracts throughout all of time and space, whatever that is that isn't of love, ask your higher self to cut that from your energy field now, sending up into the light for transmutation and healing. And finally, visualize a beautiful golden light from heaven surrounding yourself three times round and maybe set an intention for yourself to have a prayer session tonight with your higher self maybe use this as the starting point or the launching point and if you if you are familiar with who that is but you haven't done it in a while take the time tonight before you go to bed to have a little prayer vigil to set your day up to set the week up for yourself really striving for peak performance in everything you do. And we send that pink sea of love from our heart center out to our neighborhood, out to all those that need it to help the homeless people get up off their feet, find homes, sending it to Santa Clarita, to the victims and the families that need it the most, sending it to our local neighborhoods, our city, our state, our politicians, helping them to lead with an inner integrity for whatever's in the highest and best good of the people they serve, surrounding the planet with this sea of pink love. Whenever you're ready, come back into the room. So be it, and it is. Amen. <laughs> I truly hope you enjoyed today's episode. Check the show notes if you would like to get in touch with Gail Serna. Make sure to turn on the notifications and subscribe to the Strong Body, Strong Soul channel here if you'd like to be advised of future videos. Thank you so much for sharing some of your time with us. I'm Maria, just in case you forgot.